Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper, the most dangerous radio host in America. According to William Jefferson Clinton, who I, for a few minutes, I thought I was hearing tonight on television. George W. Bush started out his speech tonight exactly almost word for word the way uh, Bill Clinton delivered his State of the Nation speech. And if you don't believe me, go get a copy of Bill Clinton's speech and listen to the beginning. It's almost word for word exactly, except for the names. <laughs> except for the names of the people he introduces, the rest of it is word for word. Not kidding, folks. It was uh, spooky. Now we have a, uh, a new czar. The Homeland Security Czar. Shades of the old Soviet GRU. <laughs> Internal Security Bureau. Uh, that's what it sounds like to me. Other than that, I only got to uh, hear half of his talk, his speech. The half that I heard, aside from the two things I've already discussed, um, sounded good to me. Sounded like he's finally on the right track. I didn't hear the last half. So I don't know what he said in the last half. I won't be able to listen to that until after the broadcast. He gave his uh, speech too close to this broadcast for me to be able to listen to the whole thing. There's preparations I have to do. And uh, I fed the dogs late, so I had to get out and feed them and uh, make sure they had plenty of water. That's, uh, that's something I have to do, whether I want to or not, because I love those dogs. And the chickens share Sugar Bear's water because they belong to him. The chickens belong to Sugar Bear. <laughs> so, uh, they share the same water. Uh, gee, did you, uh, for those of you who are on the Internet or have Internet access, if you went to World Net Daily today and read Joseph Farah's column, uh, that's that was posted today, September the 20th. Uh, I was shocked when I began to get emails from people. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anything about it. And then people started writing me emails. Bill, Joseph Fair wrote a column and it's on his website today, World Net Daily. It's almost word for word verbatim of the broadcast that you delivered on Tuesday night. And so I... Uh, Zipped over to World Net Daily and checked out Joseph Fair's column, and by golly, they were right. It's almost, almost exactly, word for word, the broadcast that I delivered to my radio audience on Tuesday night. Well, some people wrote Joseph Fair and said, you know, what, what are you doing? You know, if you're going to steal Bill Cooper's material, why don't you at least give him credit? And this guy did something that's absolutely incredible. He lied. He wrote email back to them. This is Joseph Fair. Wrote email back to them and told them that he never heard of me, didn't have the slightest idea who I was. Never heard my broadcast. He lied because I send him email all the time. And at one point, he had even appointed one of his flunky reporters to investigate me. To investigate me. And so, he knows exactly who I am. Also, when we were publishing Veritas, before we ran out of money to do that, uh, we saw a Joseph Farah column somewhere, I forget where it was, and I personally called him, introduced myself, and asked permission to run it in Veritas. Those of you who got Veritas, you saw that column. Had his picture right up there on the top. It's the only column of his we ever ran. And uh, he gave us permission. We ran the column, and we sent him a copy of Veritas, uh, after it was uh, printed. So, for whatever reason, uh, I've always been very suspect of Joseph Farah. He claims to be an Arab, uh, but he is one of the most one of the most shameless apologists for international Zionism in the state of Israel that I've ever seen in my life. Even to the point of abusing and uh, denigrating his own people, the Arab people. So, um, uh, this incident today just proved it to me. Uh, if the guy's a liar, there's no, no telling what else he is, and he is a liar. He knows exactly who I am. So, if you'd like to read that column, if you listen to Tuesday's broadcast and you have Internet access, 
zip over to World Net Daily and read uh, Joseph Farah's column that he posted there today, dated September the 20th, uh, 2001. If you'll read that, except for just a little bit at the beginning, uh, it's word for word. I'm not kidding you, folks. It gave me chills running up and down my spine. I've told you many times, you'd be absolutely amazed at who listens to this broadcast. <laughs> so, uh, there you go. I'll be right back. We're going to open the phones, and, and we're going to take your comments on the President's speech tonight. I assume that all of you uh, watched it or heard it on the radio or in some, some manner uh, know, you know what it was all about. So, stay tuned. We'll be right back. We're going to open the phones. We're going to take your comments on the President's speech on uh, on America's war, America's new war on terrorism. say they saw an F-16 shoot this plane down. Uh-huh. The uh, other thing I heard today was uh, there was another plane that uh, something about its radio did not transmit, and they had an F-16 on them. And it actually landed, I mean, it followed them all the way down the landing because they thought there was another hijacking in, in the... Uh, yeah, I read that too. It was no nothing, it was nothing. No. Everything's okay. Yeah. Bill, thanks a lot. Carry on a good show. I'm going to put my radio back on. You're welcome. Thanks for calling. Bye. 520-333-4578 is the number. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello, Mr. Cooper. Hello. I was very impressed with the president tonight. Why? Well, I think he gave a very good speech. I really do. Well, the part that I heard, except for the, the carbon copy of uh, the plagiarism of Bill Clinton's State of the Union at the beginning, uh, I felt the same way, but I didn't hear the last half, so I, I'm going to reserve judgment on the last half and 
uh, I'm going to be able to see the whole thing over again after uh, after this broadcast. But one thing that did surprise me, though, was Dan Rather. He stumbled. He started crying the other day. I think he, being a liberal and sticking up so much for Bill Clinton, he realizes what a mistake that was. Well, I hope he does, because the anti-gun lobby and Bill Clinton had actually killed all those people. And, it's, you know, if Hillary was there, it's kind of odd that Bill wasn't there, too. Isn't oh, I saw, yeah, it is, because normally ex-presidents do attend things like this. Uh, but I think he, he, he knows. <laughs> he knows. Uh, and and Hillary's shameless. She's just uh, she's really, always I been a little she, she's always been a little Marxist groupie all her life. And uh, she was standing there with uh, Charles Schumer, who is the slimiest, uh, uh, biggest treasonous creep criminal in the face of this earth, as far as I'm concerned. And they, and they were whispering and smiling back and forth at each other like they, I don't know, maybe they got something going on there. <laughs> But I like what he said about all the people of the Muslim nation <coughs> not being involved. I did like that. Yeah, I like that, too. It's about time somebody said it. Yeah, it is. Well, Mr. Cooper, I appreciate your show. Thank you for calling. And it's good to talk to you. Thank you. 520-333-4578 is the number. What did you think of the president's speech? I can only comment on the first half because I missed the second half. I had to get ready for the broadcast and feed the dogs and... Do a few chores before I came on the air. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello. I watched uh, the speech by President Bush, and he mentioned uh, his primary targets are the terrorists and governments to harbor terrorists. Yeah, he, he, what he said was, uh, you're either with us or with the terrorists. Correct. And uh, which, is, which is something, sounds like something I would have said. <laughs> That sounds, that's, I like that kind of thought. Well, from what I understand, especially in uh, Britain and France, there's large Arab Muslim population. Yeah. And I noticed, like, the president of France came over this past week, and isn't that going to cause any internal difficulties? I mean, I... Well, I, I don't know. Uh, there's, there's, England has harbored terrorists also. Uh, not just France, but England, and you did mention England, and there was Tony Blair sitting up there <laughs> watching this thing, and I'm thinking, my goodness, you know, uh, I guess England and France are going to have to throw the terrorists out, aren't they? Yes, I, well, it seems like uh, things aren't going to go as smooth as they are trying to portray. They're not supposed to go smooth. Read the report from Iron Mountain. It's all there. Not supposed to go smooth. It's not supposed to be over quick. It's supposed to last a long, long time and bring the world closer to world government. One other thing, uh, like this September, uh, on the free trade agenda, they were trying to pass Fast Track, and uh, I got a note from Mike Dolan of uh, Ralph Nader's organization on my email, and he was saying uh, that the crash attempt by Republican congressman to use the attack to push fast track next week. And I guess nobody's covering fast track because... Wouldn't surprise me if nobody's covering anything. The only thing you see on the news on any channel is the terrorist attack. Well, if you want to know what's going on in Congress, you, you've got to get on the Internet and go to Congress and find out what they're doing. Or you've got to go to C-SPAN and uh, hope that they cut over to Congress to see what they're doing. Or you got to call your Congress people and... Ask them, hey, what the hell are you doing? What do you think is, I mean, the grand strategy here? I mean, like... World government. The mastermind behind it. What, what are Have you, you, I can tell right now you've never read the report from Iron Mountain. Have you? No. Read it. I've been harping on that for years. Go read. When I mention a book on the air, you better read it. Okay? Yes, sir. Go read it and you'll know. If you read that book and you don't know what's going on, then uh, you need to go to Walmart and purchase some brains. Occasionally they have them on sale. But right now, you've got brains, just get the book and read it. Okay? All right, bye. Good for you. 520-333-4578. That goes for all of you, folks. If you hear me mention a book on the air, you better read it. You better read it. I don't waste my time talking about books that aren't important. Good evening. You're on the air. 
Yeah, I, know. I listened to the entire speech. I was really pretty proud of the job that he did. He referred to freedom and liberty, liberty several times, which uh, I haven't heard since Kennedy made speeches. Um, Dan Rather is pretty much finished. He made a comment uh, after the uh, World Trade Center bombing that, quote, regardless of what you think of Bush, he's still the president, and uh, that angered an awful lot of people. So uh, I think that his uh, DNC uh, operative status is really shown through. I think he's finished. Um, the only part I didn't like about uh, I was pleased that the president um, is not uh, rushing into anything like uh, carpet bombing the way that Well, that's actually a mistake. See, he's warned his enemies. Uh -huh. He's warned our enemies. He's told them what he's going to do. He's been telling them since the 11th. He's given them plenty of time to go underground and find hiding places and build up defenses, and uh, which is, I believe, what he wants to do. Because this has got, a, according to the to the philosophy in the report from Iron Mountain, uh, this has got to occupy our attention for many years. It's the new enemy. Oh. Read the report from Iron Mountain. Okay. Read it. I saw the film several times. Uh, no, there is no film. Oh. Read the report from Iron Mountain. Don't go read somebody's uh, bullshit crap thing that they made a video out of it to try to uh, promote their, uh, their end times agenda or something. Don't get into that stuff. Go read the book. Will do. Go uh, to the source. A couple of mistakes I thought he made. Uh, he linked uh, George Pataki with uh, something decent, and George Pataki is a piece of scum. I'll sit on George Pataki. He's uh, the same as Hillary Clinton and Chuck Schumer. What about this guy who just appointed the, the new homeland uh, defense czar, uh, Governor Ridge from Pennsylvania? Don't have his voting record offhand. I don't either. I, we need somebody from Pennsylvania to call us and give us the scoop on this guy. Yeah, how he stands on our right to uh, protect ourselves, our family, and our homeland particularly. But Pataki's a piece of scum, and I, um, I'm sorry that he included Pataki along with... Uh, well, see, he's trying to keep some kind of a bipartisan partisan cooperation in Washington, so he ha he has to, if he's going to do that, cater to the other side in some of these positions and, and some things, and he has to uh, to compliment them whether he believes they deserve it or not. Hillary Clinton looked like she was going to really have an ultra attack uh, during this thing. She really I really thought her and Charles Schumer were going to burst out laughing right in the middle of the president's speech, the way they were carrying on up there, like a couple of school kids giggling and holding their hands in front of their mouth, and Chuck Schumer had the biggest, biggest Cheshire Cat grin on his face I've ever seen. I just, you know, I can't stand that guy. When I look at him, I get nauseous, physically ill. He's just a piece of filth. He's one of the most vile creatures to ever walk this planet. And, yeah. uh, and Hillary Clinton, later in the speech, with standing ovation after standing ovation, she really looked terrible. Um, didn't see the second half, but I saw the part that you were referring to where these two looked like a pair of uh, retarded people that didn't know what they were even there for. Well, let's not insult retarded people. They're much better than both of them guys put together. Uh, agreed, agreed. Uh, she particularly looked bad when he was referring to the uh, to the Nazis and to the, uh, the fascists and stuff like that. Uh, they, they flashed on Fox News shortly after that, and uh, you couldn't help, I couldn't help but thinking uh, Nazis, fascists, uh, and the rest of these totalitarians, thinking of Hillary Clinton, uh, Tom Daschle, Chuck Schumer. Yeah, well, they're socialists. Nazis oh, yeah. are socialists. And and that's what Hillary Clinton is. She's a socialist. So is right. Charles Schumer. And so is Hillary. Yeah. Nazi is socialism, as yeah. you pointed out before. That's right. Well, let somebody else in. Uh, always enjoy your commentary. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for calling. I enjoyed yours. 520-333-4578 is the number. What do you think about the president's speech? Good evening. You're on the air. Yes, good evening, Bill. <laughs> Okay, I uh, don't have much info on Governor Ridge, but I I found this Homeland Defense um, uh, new cabinet position kind of interesting. Yeah, what is that? I thought that was the role of the FBI in the military. That's what I thought. This sounds like a new a new subdivision of the Treasury, it looks like we have here. Sounds like something that will involve into Patriot Chasers to me. Eh, I, I don't know what they're going to do, but I get that little red light. Well, we'll know when we get their definition of terrorist, won't we? Yeah, I guess. Uh, well, it's a new, a new, uh, a new subject for study. I right, guess. right now they're misusing the term. Yeah, a uh, terrorist is somebody who does something to uh, to to um, get a political uh, cause 
uh, in the forefront, and they always take credit for what they do. If they don't step up and take credit for what they do, there's no point in the terrorist act, and nobody has done that. Exactly. So, therefore, this was not terrorism. This is something else. That's a very interesting point that I'll admit I didn't agree, I didn't really even think of. Very yeah, it's, good. it's the, true. The reason I'm calling, I found his speech very interesting, uh, very moving, but what I'm going to look at some more, Bill, is I watch the business news. I watch CNBC and some of the other networks. The stock market took a big dive today, and what also surprised me was the Shearman uh, Shearson Lehman Long Bond Index also took a ten percent, uh, a ten point drop, or maybe it was a twenty point drop today. Normally, when stocks go down, people usually run the bonds. Well, bonds are dropping simultaneously, and I happened to check a little while ago, and guess what's going up? Commodities, gold, oil, um, coffee, anything that you could tangible put your hand on. Well, it's about time. They should have been doing that a long time ago. Yeah, that and, and, and one other quick thing. It looks like a lot of uh, currency is flowing into Europe and some of the foreign currencies, especially the euro, which is quite interesting. Why would people be buying the euro when it's just about worthless? I don't know, unless there's something there. You know, I, In fact, why would they buy the dollar? It's worthless, too. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Uh, follow the money, Bill. That's, someone told me that many years ago. And it's been sound advice, so I'm going to certainly watch the business news and see what happens tomorrow. Yeah, well, it is good advice, and uh, uh, if you know where the money's coming from, you know usually who's behind it and what the agenda is. There you go, sir. <coughs> hey, have a good night. Thanks for calling. Right. 520-333-4578 is the number. You're listening to Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper, the most dangerous radio host in America. Good evening. You're on the air. Hey, Bill. Uh, what an Orwellian-sounding name, you know, the Office of Home Security. Yeah, well, it sounds just like the old Soviet position. They had an internal security bureau. Uh, it sounds just like it to me. <laughs> Isn't that just strengthening the ATF? That's what it sounds like to me. Uh, don't, don't start talking about the ATF. I just read Randy Weaver's book. I finally got a copy, and I just read it last night. And, uh, boy, if you, uh, well, you probably don't want to, but I'll... I'll tell you, if if, um, if you like to read stuff that really gets you, right. touches you, this this will make you cry. It's just, uh, in fact, I think I'm going to read it on the air one of these nights. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, uh, I'll have to get that book. Uh, uh, listen, uh, another thing about Dan Rather, all these people are missing Dan Rather. All these people are members of the CFR. They're all in on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't seem to realize that. <laughs> If there's a list, they publish a list of the Council on Foreign Relations. Yep. And, uh, you know, if... Uh, George Bush is a member. Well, that's right. There's all the members of, of his cabinet and... Uh, and all the high-ranking members of the Democrat Party, they're all... Uh, there's no difference between Republicans and Democrats. Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely. It hadn't been for a long time. Uh, you know, and if what you and I profess is true, is, you know, uh, about all the things that are going on... Well, hell, the president made me want to puke with his speech. Really? Why? Well, if everything, heard, everything me and you uh, uh, profess to be true is true. Well, if it's true... He's up there just lying his uh, tail off. Well, and, uh, that's true, but, but he did say what he should be saying, and he said it in a proper manner to bring people together and, and not be going out and murdering Muslims and, and indiscriminately bombing... You know, cities, but you notice they sent several wings of B-52 bombers overseas, which means they're going to carpet bomb somebody. Well, sure they are. It's politically expedient for them. Those B-52s can't single out one person. When they start dropping Buffy's their bombs... Man, ugly Buffy's, uh, when, when they start dropping bombs, whole cities disappear. That's right. That's right. And from way up in the sky, there's no pain. Uh, oh, yeah, they don't even see the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I used to know a pile of Tommy Tyree. He, man, he used to say uh, it was better than being shot at on the ground. Uh... Uh, it's good talking to you, Bill. Thanks for calling. Okay. Oh, they get shot at. Russians make some surface air missiles that can hit B-52s even at that altitude. Good evening, you're on the air. How you doing, Mr. Cooper? Good. Uh, did you hear what Saddam Hussein said today? Uh, I don't know if I want to hear it. <laughs> it was, well, it was a shot at us, basically. But he basically said uh, <coughs> that the uh, rescue effort in New York City was very poor. He said... Our people are, are experts at uh, digging survivors out of uh, smashed buildings. 
Oh, well, sounds like you got a good dig in there, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. I've, when I saw that, I cracked up. I was like, man, this guy's unreal. <laughs> you know, I think I think uh, you better watch out because I got a feeling that he's going to be one of the one of the guys that we're going to go after. I don't know. I just hope a lot of innocent people aren't killed that didn't have anything to do with this. Just because somebody is a citizen of a country and lives there doesn't mean that they agree with what their government's doing or had any hand in it whatsoever. No, I... With, I, with our embargo on food and medical supplies, we've killed hundreds of thousands of, of innocent civilians and children in Iraq that had nothing to do with, with Saddam Hussein or his policy or, or what his uh, government or his troops do. Yeah, then there was the uh, 78 days of bombing Serbia. Yeah, we could, how, many, how many people we killed there? I, you know, I never heard. They never did say how many people we killed there. Well, they're never going to admit that we killed anybody there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I heard, I, I don't know if you can confirm this. They, they wouldn't even admit they bombed the Chinese embassy. Right. Now, who the hell did they think bombed the Chinese embassy? We're the only ones over there bombing anybody. Right. Um, I don't oh, know it, it wasn't us. Yep, we were bombing that night, but it wasn't one of our bombs. Well, whose bomb was it? Must have been one of them UFOs, you know. <laughs> maybe, the, maybe them Chinese are messing with the ufologies, you know. I hear you. Uh, <laughs> maybe, it, maybe it was Art Bell. <laughs> maybe it dropped his microphone from 20,000 feet. <laughs> Hit the Chinese embassy. <laughs> He's right, he was abducted, you see, and... When they, you know, when they put him on the table to screw around with his rear end, he dropped his microphone and fell right out of that UFO. <laughs> Just absolutely destroyed the Chinese embassy. What <laughs> us? Hey, it sounds possible to me. <laughs> <laughs> I got a question to ask you. A serious question, though, is uh, that plane that uh, crashed in Pennsylvania. From what I understand, there are two debris sites there. <clears throat> There are several debris sites scattered over several miles. The plane yeah, was blown. The plane was blown apart in the air. Yeah, that's that's basically the conclusion that. But here's what they want people to believe. They need some heroes out of this. So they want people to believe, and they might have. The people on that plane may have resisted and may have tried to stop the attack, but they're not the reason the plane hit the ground. No. No, the plane was shot down. If See, if they were the reason, they would have gone up there and killed the pilots or whatever, and then the plane just would have flown into the ground. It wouldn't have come apart in the air, and there wouldn't be debris scattered over miles and miles of Pennsylvania. From what I understand, they're saying that the only person that can give that order is the president himself. He did give the order. Okay. He did. They've already admitted it. NORAD admitted it. They scrambled jets, and the order was to shoot them down. Um... But they're never going to admit that they shot that plane down. Oh, no, no. I, First place, they don't want to admit that they shot a plane that had our passengers on it, even though it was justified, and I would have given the same order. You know, I'll never be in that position, but if I was, I would have given the same, exact same order, shoot them down, and especially after knowing that, you know, they've flown into the World Trade Center towers. And... Uh, um, but they, you know, they're not going to admit that, and they need some heroes. So those passengers on that plane are going to be the heroes. One other question is: uh, George W. a bonesman like his daddy? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. See, I. That's why I, I'm so cynical. I, I watched the the speech, and uh, for George W., I mean, it, it was really good. I mean, he's not really a, a great orator or. You know, great on speeches, but uh, well, he did a good job tonight yeah, for, for, for the half that I saw, except for his plagiarism of Bill Clinton's uh, State of the Union speech in the beginning, where he, you know, gave credit to all the crippled and the wounded and the and the widows and the you know, I just this, this makes me sick. I don't care who does it, it makes yeah. me sick. It does. The thing is, you know, I, I'm looking at this and I'm like, yeah, but you know, he's a part of the agenda. He's just, you know doing what he's told and yeah. he is and, and everybody has to remember what I've always told you you know you can listen to what they say if you want to but I wouldn't pay I wouldn't give it too much credence watch what they do that's what really counts
got this new Homeland Czar now? Homeland Security Czar. What did we and, he's, uh, and he's on the president's cap. Have you noticed every... With the last several presidents, the cabinet's growing. They're going to have to build a new White House just to hold the cabinet. I guess the question would be is, what do we have before this new czar? Who is responsible for this? What do you mean, who's responsible? Who's the one man that was supposed to be watching the East Coast? What do you mean, watching the East Coast? Watch. We've never had a security czar before. It's the FBI's job to maintain the security of, of the country. And... Uh, uh, along with customs and immigration, and it's the military's job to defend it, and it's the president's job to command all this stuff. We don't. We, we need a homeland security czar like we need a you know a new dog catcher. That's just uh, unbelievable. You, you don't, you, no one right now is accountable to this stuff. What do you mean account? What do you mean accountable? Well, who was accountable when they attacked Pearl Harbor? Yeah, but we all know the story of Pearl Harbor. Well, it doesn't matter. Who was accountable when we were attacked by, you know, the English in the War of 1812? <clears throat> Who was well, I guess the only solution we would have in this country... Nobody has to be... A everybody's accountable. Yeah. Homeland defense. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. It's just it's mind-boggling. I guess... I think the only solution we'd have here in, uh, you know, in America... As if we could impanel a citizen's grand jury to go after these guys. How do you do that? Uh, I don't know. That's the only thing that's going to work. Well, I don't think that would work. I think they'd send troops to arrest the grand jury, or they'd just laugh at them. Yeah, they've done it. Before. And who would you send to enforce the edict of the grand jury? The militia? I don't know. Well, it'd have to be the militia. Yeah, and I guarantee you, they would send troops to oppose the militia and wouldn't allow the militia to arrest anybody. So that would start the Civil War, which is okay with me. There's going to be a Civil War. Might as well start, you know, yeah, so it's, it's sooner than later. <laughs> it's definitely going to come to the guns <coughs> Yeah. Yeah, no doubt about that. And I bet you, the, I wonder if the new Homeland Security czar is listening to us. Yeah, really. <laughs> uh, again, I... The day after the, the plane hit the World Trade Center on the ABC World News tonight, Peter Jennings, they showed the lake where they were getting the seats, the airplane seats out of the lake. Yeah, long, long way. It's about six miles away from where the plane crashed. Yep. Yeah, six miles away. How'd them seats get there? Huh? <laughs> yeah, really. I think, you know what I think? I think the plane crashed. And some Pakistanis with elephants ran up and grabbed some seats and put them on the elephants and, and, and you know, got on them elephants and, and, and elephants had over to the lake and dumped them. That's what I think. Yeah, unbelievable. Okay, Bill, I'll get off. <laughs> okay. Because if you believe old Georgie Porgy and all the officials, you know, that plane wasn't shot down. Good evening on the air. Hi, Bill. This is Tim. Hi, Tim. Uh, I watched the speech and, and uh, when he started it off like the Clintner did, that just proved to me right, you know, just to, from the get-go. I couldn't believe he copied Clinton. He's just, it, it's just ball face proof that he's just the next step of the agenda. It's the same thing. <laughs> that blew my mind when he did that. And and watch when you watch the ending of, his, of your tape tomorrow. The way he described this, this new czar guy, which... You can see this is obviously part of his smaller government he promised us. <laughs> yeah, let's make a whole new bureaucracy and make the, and the government. Government will get smaller. The incredible, shrinking, expanding, ever disappearing, you know, overwhelming government. It, it's the word. You'll know, you'll know when you watch it tomorrow. The words to me, I'm so used to their double speak. The words to me is like, we're appointing a new czar for to to watch over the patriot movement and round them up. That's just what the way it struck me. Well, it's probably exactly what it's all about. Yeah. Okay. Well. Uh, what, what's this? What's this guy going to do to protect the homeland? What's he going to march up and down with a rifle and appear in New York City or what? What's he going to do? He's going to round up all those people <coughs> that that Janet Re Reno deemed uh, oh right wing. Uh, Wacko Christian extremists. 
Well, I, I think that's definitely coming. I don't think it's coming real soon, but I think it's definitely coming. It's on the horizon, we know that. Yeah, watch for their definition of, see, they're going to have to define terrorists. Yeah. When they define terrorists, we'll know exactly what they're up to. I actually, uh, I found one of your books. I got it ordered yesterday, your book. And then uh, I also found uh, the book you were talking about the other night, uh, Fortunate Son. Uh -huh. I found one of those and got it ordered, too. Good. So I'm looking forward to that coming in. Okay. And uh, I sent you a little email. I don't know if you'll get it. I'm kind of moronish when it comes to the computer. So next time you're reading, check it out. All right. God bless, my friend. Thank you. Bye-bye. 520-333-4444. Five, five, Good evening. You're on the air. Hi, Bill. Um, I had a few things I found a bit uh, disappointing and troublesome about this is, uh, speech tonight. And uh, basically, at one point, uh, he was mentioning uh, the same old rhetoric about how our freedom is under attack. And he listed uh, some of our freedoms as far as freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and a few other uh, freedoms. That but he didn't mention the keep a bare arms, did he? That's exactly what I was just going to say. <coughs> um, he left that out, so I was a little bit disappointed with that. And that's also the freedom that makes all the other freedoms possible. And then also towards the... the Second half of the speech, I don't think. He's With, without that, that, there are no other freedoms. Right, right. Um, also, towards the uh, second half of the speech, I'm not sure if you caught that part when he issued the terms to Taliban government. On, on the yeah, of yeah, I heard part of that. Yeah. I, I don't know if I heard all of the heard it, part of that. It seems like the terms that he listed, nobody could ever com completely comply to. Um, so he's just setting the stage basically for an unrealistic. Uh, goals for this Taliban government to reach where there's, there's really no way they could possibly reach this and leaving him... Yeah, you know, some of his demands would actually uh, conflict so much with their religion that, that they, if they really believe and, and are devout um, uh, adherents to their religion, they can't possibly carry out. Mm -hmm. and, and he said that, that they're not negotiable. Right, right. So That would be like telling a Christian, uh, you have to give up communion forever. Well, a Christian, a Christian can't do that. Right. So it kind of really backs them in the corner. Yeah. Uh, really with no alternative. And then also uh, kind of seemed like he flip-flopped a little bit as far as changing the time frame to be much, you know, he, at one point he says it's going to be a while, and then at another point he says, you know, we're going to kind of do this right away. They, you know, this, it starts, you know, it gives the impression it starts taking right now. Well, I would imagine that maybe some covert operations are, have already been set in motion, but you'll never hear about those. Right. Yeah, actually, he mentioned that some things will be uh, things you'll see on TV with uh, big bombs going off and other things you won't even hear about. Yeah. So he did mention that. But those were the two things I found uh, just seemed like he flip-flopped a little bit on, uh, and he kind of talked out of both sides, of it, both sides of his mouth a bit. But that was my observation. Yeah. Okay, Bill. Thanks for calling. Thanks a lot. Bye. 520 It's your turn to call. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi there, Bill. It's uh, Mike in Canada calling. I thought uh, George Bush delivered a well-crafted speech. Um, he failed to mention that uh, Afghanistan is the world's largest illicit, illicit opium producer. They can include a drug war along with their war on terrorism. Well, if they did that, they'd have to go get the CIA. That's right. You know, uh, you know the global don't. terror network they speak of. It almost sounds like a new cable channel. Um, <laughs> I have to be reticent in what I say because I think he defined what a terrorist is. If you're not with us, you're against us. Does that include foreign policy? If I discuss that, if I'm not endorsing this, am I already labeled? Well, he pretty much made it clear that he was talking about nation states. Uh huh. I think we still remain in an information war. But but that moment. but that might you know, roll over to and apply to individuals at some point in the future. Uh-huh. You're not with us, you're against us. Sounds like the, the Freemasons. If you're not one of us, you're nothing. That's uh -huh. what they, that's their motto. Well, it's, he used the word pride, I believe. You don't feel proud. You pride know, goeth before, understand. pride goeth before a fall. Uh-huh. But we shouldn't be deceived by their pretenses to piety, though, should we? No. No, they're not pious. They're, that's, I'm quoting George W. there. they Oh, I, I was talking about George W. George W. pretends to be a Christian, but if if you're at that level, if you're a member of Skull and Bones, if you're 
if you're a player in the Illuminati, you're a secular humanist. You're not a Christian. Uh -huh. Thanks for the time, Bill. You're welcome. Good night. I like what he said. Sounds like a new television network. <laughs> Good evening, our cable network. Good evening, you're on the air. Hi, Bill. Joe from Boston. Hi, Joe. I'm calling my bookstore and trying to get that book and see if I can get someone to read it to me because, you know, I can't see. Yeah, well. Thank you, uh, five dollars, and this time it'll be a cash donation. Thank you. Uh, about that airplane, about that airplane, how, I've heard mixed stories that the seats are six miles away, so that means, uh, it wasn't shot down. If it were shot down, there would be much further. Is that true or not true? Because I don't know much about this stuff. What do you mean, much further? That's oh, pretty far. It would be. Like 15, uh, 10, 15 miles. This is what I've heard. No, 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 no. That's baloney. <laughs> it could be anywhere. could be two miles. could be one mile. could be six miles. could be 15 miles. Happens to be, that's not the only other place where wreckage is. There's wreckage all over the place. Because I heard witnesses say they uh, saw it uh, go into the water, no, go into the uh, ground, and they heard the engine being gunned. They interviewed them a couple of days ago on TV. They've interviewed a lot of people, but they haven't interviewed on on uh, the Communist News Networks any of the people who say they saw it shot down. Yeah, that's true. Okay, I just want to find like out about it. It's like TWA 800. Over yeah, 240 people saw a missile go up and, and blow up TWA Flight 800. Every one of those witnesses were intimidated by the FBI and by government uh, agents, and, and they were told to shut up, and nobody, nobody... Uh, listened to what they had to say. I hope so. Only takes two people to convince to convict somebody in court and send them to, to the electric chair uh, for murder. Here's 240 people saw a missile shoot down flight TWA 800, and uh, their testimony was no good. I hope someday this will all come out. I hope someday this will be opened and it'll all get out. Well, okay, thank you for your time. You're Bye -bye. welcome. But I wouldn't hold my breath over that. <laughs> Anytime anything gets out, you know, it's luck. And it's usually because they want it to come out. Good evening, you're on the air. Yeah, howdy. I was disappointed in the fact that uh, there's no evidence that has come out yet on this thing. Well, uh, that's true. There's no evidence of who did this. I didn't really, I didn't, you know, I wasn't really <laughs> counting on it, but it, it, it's terrible, you know. Yeah, I thought that he would present some evidence tonight, and maybe he did in the second half, because I didn't see that. No, he didn't. All he did is just uh, he, he name that one group, I forget the name of it, and... Uh, Al-Qaeda. Yeah, Al-Qaeda and, and brought in the Taliban. Everybody knows about them. Yeah. But, you know, there's a, there's a real disaster going on because uh, Pakistan, Iran, and I'm not sure if Iraq, is, they've closed their borders, and, and, the Pac and the Afghanis were fleeing that country in droves. Well, they don't want to be bombed into the Stone Age. No, they're, they're already in the Stone Age. I mean, <laughs> they're going to drive them back to the, to the what? The, uh, what's, what's the name of when the, when the dinosaurs were alive? The prehistoric time, but uh, yeah. it's pretty prehistoric there anyway, except for that rule. <laughs> but it's terrible. All those people, all their possessions have traveled all, you know, from Afghanistan, all areas. And, and well, nobody has, to, nobody has to let them cross their border. I know, I know. You wouldn't want them coming in here, would you? What well, if, no, not really, but... What if we were going to bomb Mexico and every all the Mexicans started coming up here? Are you going to let them in? No, but that, that's... Well, the point it's okay. Pakistan has a right to close their border and not allow anybody in if they don't if they I agree work. with you, but it's, it's the human, human tragedy that we... No, 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 no. It's the law. We live by the law or we, or we live under tyranny. They have a right to close their border if they want to. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, we, we live by the law. If those people want humane conditions, they are obligated to change their own government to bring that about. Nobody else is obligated to give it to them. No, you're, you're absolutely right. I agree with you there. Damn right I'm right. But, uh, if I wasn't right, we'd still be living under King George. That's very true, but our, our, our government is supposed to be constitutional. <laughs> we don't have that, do we? What's that got to do with what we've just been talking about? Well, you, you said... Uh, <laughs> It's the law that can close their borders, and I agree with you. You know, yeah. our our law says it's the Constitution, but yet they they defile that every day. The Constitution has been it hasn't been enforced for many years. We exactly. are living under tyranny. I've been I've been educating you to that fact for many many years and proving it on this broadcast and on our website for years. Um, 
So, yeah, the Constitution is not in effect. And it's not in effect because most Americans allowed this to happen because they never even knew what it said to begin with. You're absolutely right. For people looking for books, I found, I found a good source. Uh, it, you can get it there from eBay, but it, it's, it's www.halfcom, H-A-L-F.com. They sell new and used at reasonable rates. Okay. They don't have everything, though. Of course not. Okay. Have a good evening. You too. Thanks for calling. 520-333-4578 is the number. I'm going to try. I'm going to try not to go over tonight. I've been going over time uh, because uh, the calls have been so good in the last few broadcasts. I just haven't been watching the clock. We've gone over almost every night. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi, Bill. Uh, I called uh, the other night uh, just as we were closing off the show, mm -hmm. and I was going to address the caller who was inquiring about white supremacy and the mentality associated with some Masonic groups who think that the white race is supreme. Mm hmm and how the, the power of knowledge over time has come, has come to distort some of the people who were given the oracles of God in the first place. Why corruption means core is heart. Rupture is break. Why it's heartbreaking. Because as one enters a state of meditation or holiness or prayer, you don a seamless white garment. The white is representative of cleanliness. The seamless garment is your skin, whatever race you are. You just clean yourself because cleanliness is next to godliness. Whatever faith, whatever day you enter into a Sabbath, you do your yard work, you clean your house, you clean your body, which is the garment of your soul, and then you clean your thoughts and prepare for a new week. Except now, they think it's a matter of skin color, bank account, or bloodline. Yep, you're right. And uh, the thing I the other night I mentioned about, you know, why would you go to Afghanistan where you can't possibly win a war? It's not really about that kind of war. I think really it has the same thing to do with another one of the Bush family tells and what ends up happening to Bush's Bush family people. No, I think... They're best friends in Panama where they just set up a bunch of CIA bases Hold to on. get the cocaine here. Hold on. Uh -huh. You're wrong on that point. Really? Did you read uh, 1984? Uh, yes. Read it again. Didn't you notice in the book that they were always at war? And there was well, always, yeah, yeah, always sure. TV screens all over showing the progress of the war. Right. But, it, but there was no war. There well, was no war going on. It was all a presentation of the state to, to furnish the population with an enemy so that they wouldn't turn against the state. Oh, yeah. Read it again. Well, and then also, read the report from Iron Mountain. And don't go off on these flights of fancy. It's not about what you think it is. It's about world... I think that's a part of it's it. It's about world... No, it's not. It's about world government and enslaving yeah. the human race. Well, oh, I agree entirely. Read the report from Iron Mountain. Read George Orwell's 1984 <laughs> again. And you may start to have some light bulbs go off in your head. Oh, yeah. They've been going off <laughs> a lot lately. This? A lot of people actually are, are cluing in. A, you know, little by little. This is the new enemy and the new war. But you know, honestly, Bill, today earlier on shortwave, I heard it down there. I could not believe the attitude of actually this is almost verbatim, where somebody said in one of these radio shows, this is a war between the Church of Satan and the Church of God. I mean, it, uh, talk about inciting. War, oh my gosh. And it wasn't just the one show. I actually heard it on a couple. Of, I know, I know. It's scary that way, that the social engineering has rendered a lot of people... No, it hasn't rendered them. They always were, I and probably know, always will be stupid. Yeah. Stupid. Uh, well, okay. I'm going to keep hanging in there. You, you really, you really want to you really be entertained. Listen to Alex Jones. Oh, yeah. He'll have you rolling on the floor laughing. I bet. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to have to get the uh, report from Iron Mountain. Yeah, get it. Okay, thanks, Bill. You're welcome. Bye. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight. This is not a, not about what you guys think. It's about world government, about enslaving the human race under a one world government. That's what it's about. And all this is taking us there. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello, Bill. This is Dan from Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. um, very interesting times we live in. Uh, as I get done editing video, I'll be sending you some of the best things that I saw on TV. I have to agree with your with your opinion to fight back in this war instead of 
fighting them with the traditional Second Amendment, you know, gun idea. Let's fight them back with the First Amendment. Let's nail them <laughs> with the truth. Uh, you know, I've been doing that for years. Oh, I know you have, and I've been. And we're still losing. We're still losing the war. Pardon, I'm sorry. Pardon me. We're still losing. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Without a doubt. Yeah, it's going to take guns, my friend. Eventually. It's the only but... thing they respect is power. Unless you have a gun in your hand, you don't have any power. Period. I understand that, sir, but I mean in the short term to retaliate. The First Amendment is our best weapon, without a doubt. I, in my opinion. We don't control the media. But you can still get to them on, on radio. You know what? You're dreaming, my friend. I've been doing this for years, and I know what I'm talking about. We don't have the means to reach a broad enough audience uh, in order to educate enough people to make that work. How about the national broadcast uh, uh, programs and stuff, the NPR stuff? National Public Radio, the call-in talk. Are you kidding? Have you ever listened to National Public Radio? Oh, absolutely. It's Marxist, communist. How do they stop you from getting into that, though? They have call screeners. Oh, I, I've never experienced it. I guarantee you, when you get on there and start talking about some of the things that you're going to need to talk about, you'll get dumped. Uh, most likely. They do it all the time. Rats. All right, thank you, Bill. Yeah. Good luck. Uh, God bless. And stop dreaming. Dreaming won't win the war. No, sir. Yes, yeah, see... Uh, I could have, if I was like that guy when I was fighting the Vietnam War, I could have just found me a nice, comfortable place in the sand and gone to sleep and just dreamed it away. I could have won that war by dreaming. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi, William. Hello. I, I, bravo, William Cooper. I heard you last night, and I, I can't, I was rolling on the floor when you trapped that man into into the Constitution and the Fourth and Fifth Amendment. Bill? I'm here. Are you there? Yeah. Oh, that was excellent. Excellent. You caught the guy in the Venus flytrap. And it, 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 a lot of the callers are here. We have a, in, in my opinion, we have a lot of very confused people in this country. <laughs> confused is being very nice to them. Yeah. yeah. Very nice to them. Yes. But what, what I really wanted to, uh, I wanted to point out two things. And I kind of wanted to contribute this to the war on drugs, but there is a very big difference. And what people aren't mentioning is that President Bush has put this country into a state of emergency. It's martial law. It's on our website. And, and when that happened, Martial law was declared the first day, and everybody should have known it. When right, he sealed the right. borders, sealed the seaports, grounded all airplanes, and called up the army to uh, to march in the streets of Washington and evacuated the capital of the United States of America, everybody on this earth should have known that we were under martial law at that time. Whether or not he told the public, it was a fact. Precisely. But and we and we not, still and we still are under martial law. But what's not what's not being said is <laughs> in, in the civil defense, which is now FEMA, under all these type of this state of emergency, but from what I understand, doesn't the president give over command to the commissioner of FEMA? Not unless he wants to. Domestically now. Not unless he wants to. Okay. Now, now my other question... Under, was, under certain conditions, like if there was an atomic attack, it would be automatic. Right. <coughs> but my other, my other point I wanted to make is there the, the war on drugs, I mean, and now, now we have this war. It doesn't matter what the war is. When, we, when right. we're at war and we have an enemy, it's, it's all for the same purpose. Well, and, well I agree. And it accomplishes same the purpose. same thing. We just but graduated. I'm trying to make Bill. Wait right. a minute. This is my broadcast. Okay. It's just graduated from, from a... Uh, from a uh, a, a pre, let's pretend law enforcement effort to blood games. Exactly. But, but what I wanted to say is, <clears throat> is the, the war on drugs and the war on terrorism is a little different because you can't put drugs in jail. You can put people in jail. They were doing real good at that. Most of the people and, we have in our prisons are this, in there for victimless crimes involving drugs. And, and, and this... <clears throat> and this um, the war we have on terrorism... It's not to put people in jail, it's to kill them. It's, 
it's it's gone that far, but but what it also does for another step in the progression of the order. You better hurry up because we're running out of time, okay. and you're just beating around the bush chewing on that tobacco cud you got there. Spit it, it out. It plays right into the hands of the of the uh, law enforcement growth industry to absolutely mess with every single one of our liberties as long as we put up with it. Yep, we're out of time. Thanks Thank for calling. You, Bill. That's it, folks. Gosh, I'm actually going to finish on time tonight. Uh, thanks for all those wonderful calls. Thanks for your participation. Good night, and God bless each and every single one of you. Good night, Annie, Pooh, and Allison. I love you. To the hour of the time, you're surely William Cooper, the most dangerous radio host in America. Don't forget to tune in again on Monday night, folks. I'm going to go now and listen to the uh, to the president's speech all over again. Hope you have a pleasant, uh, uneventful weekend.